TV fam, this is Elder Della Major, the System of Education Senior Servant Leader, coming back to you today to again to take up part two of talking about the Feast of Trumpet. Last time when we were saying, we shared with you that the Fall Feast celebration is a moment and a time where we reflect, remember, repent, and then at the end where we rejoice. During this celebration starting on September 25th, we are going to be celebrating three festivals or what we say is three feasts. That is the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. That is gonna be the culmination, that is the time and the moment where we are gonna all come together and celebrate what God has already established and set into place. But I wanna pick up where I left off on the last teaching of sharing about the Feast of Trumpet. Just to give you just a small insight, remember the Feast of Trumpet is the sound or what you might say the assembly call for us to wake up and to make sure sure that we are in tune with God. It is the period and the time where we are setting aside, we're not working, we're stopping, and we are reflecting, and we are remembering the things that has happened in our life, and we're putting together our mindset, and we're reflecting on what have I done right? How have I been living? What is God looking and seeking for? Because it's going to lead up into, as we say, the Day of Atonement. And on the Day of Atonement, that is going to be the point in the time where we are atoning for those sins, atoning for our action, and also it's going to be a day when we release, I'm talking fully release, those individuals and those situations that easily hinder us and easily beset us. Remember, the scripture says in Hebrew, lay aside every weight that easily besets us. And one of the things that we need to do, especially when in relation to the Day of Atonement, is to let it go. That's the reason why we say the Feast of Trumpets is our sounding board. It is that wake up call for us to be able to get ourselves to stop and to reflect. But I want to share something else a little bit as it relates to the Feast of Atonement. This is part two, and part two is going to talk about the Day of the Lord, which is basically the second coming of Jesus Christ. So the first thing we know about the Feast of Trumpets, that again, it commemorates the end of the agricultural and festival, festival year. We like to call it in this case, it is the uh, uh, the 10 days of repentance or the day of awe. Basically, when the sound of the trumpet is what we say is the holy month, okay? The trumpet sound was our alarm of sorts. Basically, it helped us to understand that it is the time now to stop what we're doing, to take an inter- inspection and take a reflection and basically get into the mindset to prepare for repentance. Also, the Feast of Trumpets foreshadows the aspects of the ministry of Jesus Christ. You see, in Matthew 24, verses 29 to 31, I'm going to read it. It says, immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not light, will give light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies, come on, will be shaken. Then will appear, come on, the son of man in heaven and all these people on earth, that means you and me, will mourn when they see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he would send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they would gather his elect from the four winds, the north, the south, the east, and the west, from one end to the heaven to the others. Remember, I want you to notice something. It is the sound. It is the trumpet blowing of the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember, the second coming is telling you and letting us know that Christ himself, the bridegroom, is coming back to proclaim this bride. Who is his bride? We are his bride. We are his church that's living here on earth. And it says that he is not coming back as no suffering savior, but he's coming back as the King of kings and the Lord and Lord. And all of those who have died with 
in, in his name, who are still living in his name. We're going to be caught up and we're going to rule and we're going to reign with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is something powerful as believers, as Christians, that we have the expectation and that we have to look forward to. So when the trumpet sound, and it's not going to be any type of trumpet, it's going to be a shofar that's blowing a sound that's going to let you know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming. That's the reason why we call it the day of the Lord. It is the moment and the time where we have it in our mind, the expectation of God coming back and proclaiming us and we shall reign with him forever and ever. Oh, what a glorious day it will be. But this is the time and the moment for us to take a pause and to reflect and to reflect on the things of how I'm living. You see, the question that we need to ask V fam is this, how have I been living on earth? How have I been representing our Lord of Lords and our King of Kings? What have I been doing in this life, in this body, in this time, in this season? When Christ come, what will he find? Will he be find a holy church, a holy nation, a royal priesthood? Or will he be finding those who's choosing to surrender all to their own vain glories? May it not be so. May it be to the point and to the moment where we take the moment and the time to reflect, to remember all what he done for us on Calvary Cross, to remember the sacrifice of his blood on Calvary Cross, but also to remember the suffering that we impart on today can compare to the glory that we're going to receive when he comes back for his bride. Oh, I'm getting so excited. I'm just so charged about this. The key thing also, all throughout the text, especially in the, old, in the New Testament, it prophesied. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is that trumpet sound that he said that the saints again in the grave will rise up. That Jesus Christ will return and his father, oh my God, will be a glorious moment where we will see our daddy, where we will see our father. So the Feast of Trumpets, you guys, isn't just a Jewish holiday. Because oftentimes during this time in the Jewish calendar, you know, this is the moment where the sound of the trumpet is beginning. But it's just not for the Jewish. It's for all of us who believes on this special day that we too is going to get a chance to see who it is that we serve. That the Bible tells us that we know he should come. We may not know what is going to happen and what I should be. But the one thing it told us we should know. We're going to be just like him. Are you so excited? That's the reason why I'm so excited about these feasts. That's the reason why, because it helps us to, rem to remember, to remind us about not only the first coming when he was here on earth during the Passover, during Pentecost, but it also helps us to remember that the feast of the festivals have yet to be fulfilled because when the fall feast is fulfilled, we know that Christ will be here on earth to proclaim his bride. He will be here to restore back the peace right here on earth. That is something to be excited for. So I hope that you was excited just as I was, as I was sharing with you part two of the Feast of the Trumpets. What is part two? It's talking about the day of the Lord. It is the day when our King of King and our Lord of Lord will come back and he will part the sky and we who are believers will be caught up and we will know because that sound, that trumpet sound, when the shofar blow, that means we have even more to be able to celebrate with our Lord. And with that being said, thank you for allowing me to be able to share with you these little nuggets. I hope that you are so excited because I know I'm excited too. Be blessed, me fam, until I see you again. God bless.